Hello, everybody. Welcome to today's webinar, The Sales Pivot, Selling Your Products and Services Effectively in a Post-Pandemic Economy. I'm Rebecca Immels I'm with the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. Welcome to today's video. So glad to have you. I'm really looking forward to today's webinar for a couple of reasons. One being that our panelists are from media, and that is my uh, background. And even more importantly, our moderator today, he is John Carroll. Thank you again, John, so much for being our moderator today. John is a growth consultant strategist. He is president of Unlimited Performance, a member of the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce Executive Board. And I am very humbled and proud to call him my friend. Hello, John. Hi, Rebecca. Thank you so much for uh, welcoming us and uh, pulling all this together. You are the glue that holds uh, this together and the chamber together, especially in these uh, work from home days. So we thank you and we welcome you to the Sales Pivot, a weekly series of informational discussions on what's working and not working in organizations in the midst of and following the COVID-19 pandemic. This event is presented exclusively by the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce. My role as moderator is to introduce our three panelists get the discussion started with some questions and give you, the viewer, the opportunity to participate by using the chat function, which Rebecca will be monitoring. I welcome our three panelists and those attending the event live, as well as those taking advantage of the recorded event. Thank you for taking the time and joining us with your Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce fellow members in looking at real world, real time strategies and tactics to help you sell and serve your key clients and customers, as well as new prospects in this post-pandemic business climate. Um, I will have um, a special free offer at the end of this, so you wanna stay with us for that. It's something very exciting, and it has to do with something that we all have to deal with before, during, and after a, a pandemic. The new normal, as it's being called, is requiring leaders, sales professionals, and entire organizations to rethink and retool basic assumptions on how and where they operate and offer value to their customers and clients. These challenges and others are certainly true for our three guest panelists today. I'll introduce them by name and ask each one of them to share one key benefit the current disruption has given them. Our first panelist is Vicki Boyd. Vicki Boyd is a lifelong journalist with over 40 years in the business. She was first publisher at King Street, South Carolina for the news. In 2002, she moved to Mount Pleasant to become publisher of the Moultrie News and ad director of the MUSC Catalyst, where she is today. She has also served as publisher of the Georgetown Times, South Strand News, James Island Journal, and the Mercury. In 1994, Vicki was the first female president of the Rotary Club of King Street. In 2000, she served as president of the South Carolina Press Association and completed Leadership South Carolina in 2007. Vicki, welcome and uh, give us one thing that the uh, pandemic has afforded you in a positive vein. Thank you, John, and thank you for inviting me to be here today. I think the positive uh, for me and my associates is that we've had to slow down and slow down and build better relationships with our partners, our small businesses and local businesses. You know, at first you couldn't call up and say, hey, you wanna run an ad next week or how can I serve your advertising needs? Cause everyone was shut down. Instead, we were reaching out and touching those people and saying, how are you doing? Is there anything we can do for you? And mainly just talking and talking through it. So for me, it was building, giving me the opportunity to slow down build better and more intimate relationships with my business partners. Fantastic, Vicki. And, and you know, we've heard that from so many professionals and yet it seems to have been the exact thing to do, right? It's the human mm -hmm. factor that comes into play even before any of the business that we conduct. And so um, that really is reinforcing what we've heard um, elsewhere. And so glad to hear you say that. Thanks, Thank Vicki. Our second panelist is Mary Margaret Nelms a South Carolina native and Clemson University graduate. Mary Margaret joined WCIV as Vice President General Manager in August of 2014. Before that, she had risen through sales to General Manager of WTAT WMMP in Charleston. 
She's been a Sinclair Broadcast Group employee for 18 years. Nelms was named General Manager of the Year by Broadcast and Cable in 2015 during a year of tragedy for the Charleston market. Her background consists of sports marketing, which fuels her commitment to televise many local sporting events, including high school football, Charleston River Dogs baseball, and Charleston Battery soccer. Friday Night Rivals, a high school football program she brought to Charleston, has given over $100,000 in grants and scholarships to low country students and schools. Mary Margaret creates ties with many community organizations because she feels improving the quality of life in Charleston is an important part of her job. She lives in Mount Pleasant, is married to Andy, and has a six-year-old son. Mary Margaret, welcome. You are muted. All right, thank you. <laughs> Gonna figure out this technology. Um, thank you so much for having me today. Tell us one thing that the pandemic, the business disruption has afforded you in a positive way. Well, I think a lot of what Vicki said is learning new ways to connect with our clients and our viewers. Um, you know, with the embracing technology right now, we've really had to speed everything up. We thought we were pretty technically savvy, um, but then really jumping in with this, we had to learn a lot really quick. And it's also, I think, um, my company, you know, I'm just seeing a lot of empathy um, from everyone, everything that everyone's going through, everybody's got different challenges that they face, and they've really been supportive. We've tried to do that with um, our clients and our coworkers, is just be supportive and be there for them. Um, we've also learned a lot about how we can be more flexible in the future, and we're, we've learned a lot what we can and can't do and kind of change some of our traditional processes that we've had. Wonderful. Thank you, Mary Margaret. And uh, I guess of, of any of us that are here on, on today's event, uh, your changes have been probably most evident because they are up on the big screen for us to see uh, each evening, aren't they? Afternoon and evening. Yes, so we'll everybody more... see the inside of everybody's house now. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If we were already close enough to them, we, know, we now right. have been in their homes. Yes. Um, so thank you, Mary Margaret. <laughs> Thank Our you. third panelist is Bill Macchio. As the owner of Media Services Incorporated, Bill serves as publisher of numerous lifestyle magazines, both hard copy and digital, that focus on activities, people, places, and things in and around Mount Pleasant. Bill attended the University of Florida in the early 1970s, publishing his first magazine while he was still in school. He moved to Texas in 1978 as the assistant market manager at News Corporation, which owned multiple weekly newspapers in the Houston area. He landed in the Low Country in 1980, securing a position in advertising sales with none other than the Moultrie News. In 1986, he started publishing East Cooper Magazine, the predecessor of today's Mount Pleasant Magazine. Bill, welcome. And uh, tell us one thing that the uh, disruption has afforded you in a positive way. Well, I have to mirror what the uh, two distinguished ladies that are hanging out with us here today. I think it's brought the, we, we have a very tight publishing family here. And as Mary Margaret said, there's a lot of, we, we try to help everybody. And it does flow to the clients. So, cause it always starts with the company. If this company is, is uh, wired properly, then their, their thought process will extend to their customer base. and. Uh, we just love doing things for our customers anyway. So the fact that we uh, were able to provide uh, uh, special services, we did a lot of free stuff, we extended, you know, terms. We just do whatever whatever we need to do for our client base to help them is that's, that's the bottom line. So this definitely has not been a 100% uh, uh, terrible experience. And it reminds me a lot of Hurricane Hugo, what, what I went through with Hurricane Hugo because when that happens, a community truly comes together. And um, uh, Carol, I think I think the, I think the thing to look at, John, is is this is the first time in our lifetime that the world the world is on the same uh, on the same music sheet. There, everybody's singing the same song, and that has a lot of benefits to it. It does indeed, Bill. Thank you so much. We're so glad to have you with us. 
and thanks to all three panelists for making the time today to share some thoughts and insights. Here's the first question for the panel, and we'll go in this order, Vicki and then Mary Margaret and Bill, um, for this first question. What is the single biggest hurdle you expect to face or you're facing already as you work through this extraordinary time? Vicki, we'll start with you. Well, you know, we still have to make our budgets and it's figuring out how to do that in today's market and workplace. Uh, it's a big challenge. Again, we've done that through consultative um, work with our clients. It was about, I guess, a week ago that I saw some of the business start to turn around and start to come back. But it's been working with people to have a plan for as they re-enter the world again. You know, um, you know, I have some concerns about the second wave that they talk about, and what's that going to mean to all of us as the second wave hits, and how do we keep our own businesses healthy? as we try to help other businesses be healthy and to, to grow. And I think that's going to take thinking outside the box, coming up with new initiatives. And uh, first of all, coming from the heart with caring about other people and what they're going through in their businesses too. You're muted, John. Thank you. Thank you, Vicki. Mm -hmm. um, and um, I appreciate your, uh, your insights and thoughts there. Mary Margaret, same thing. One key thing you're doing now in the current business and economic climate, or excuse me, one, the single biggest hurdle you expect to face or you're already looking at. Um, well, I was really kind of, you know, at first we were really focused on getting everybody out of the office, um, deploying our staff to work remotely. And that seemed to go really quickly and really fast. And I was amazed at how fast that, that went, you know. But now the slow part, the hard part of recovery, um, how do you bring a business back in an environment where we don't have a vaccine yet um, and the economy is suffering? So that slow road of recovery is just, and, you know, putting our sellers um, back on, you know, uh, on outside sales um, and going on commercial shoots and everything and, you know, just keeping um, my, my coworkers and my clients safe, you know, so that's what really we're concerned about right now. And Mary Margaret, for what it's worth, your very business relies on people being out on the streets, right? Oh, absolutely. We're outside sales um, and it's really changed a lot. We've had to, you know, um, learn how to remote sell. And um, so, but we've learned a lot. So it's a, it's, it is a silver lining with that of, of ways we can deliver and be more efficient and leaner even um, in our processes. So, yes, indeed. Thanks. <laughs> yep. Thanks, Mary Margaret. Um, and uh, Bill, same question. Single biggest hurdle you you expect to face, or you're already facing? Well, we the hurdles I enjoy because it truly makes us think out of the box. So the when we have a hurdle, whether it's distribution, like we had a hurdle the other day, taking one of our magazines is called Health Links, and taking it to the doctor's offices. And they were only letting one person in at a time. It was hard to put them. They're not going to put them in the waiting room. So we came up with a great way to get the magazines in the hands of their patients through direct mail. So it, the distribution was, it was a hurdle for us. Um, the uh, um, technology of, of print publications have to be more technology driven now than ever before. And um, but, but truly, John, if, if you have the right attitude, you're positive about it, uh, then you'll find a solution, uh, a creative solution. And I think that's the, the single best thing about what's been going on. These hurdles that we do have, it, they're really creating solutions for us. And, and that's what business is about, is creating solutions. So, uh, so my biggest hurdle is, is, I guess, when there is a challenge, uh, be, don't, don't be frustrated. Uh, don't have, don't be anxious because through frustration and anxious, you're not going to get to the end game. So as soon as I reduce that in any of my team that's here, uh, as soon as I, um, you know, get them to just think about it, we do come up with solutions and it's through good attitude. Bill, thank you. That's, um, yeah. And, and, and really that flexibility and thinking that, that flexibility and, looking at an issue or an opportunity from all sides really can generate uh, some, some really cool solutions. So I, I thank you for that. Um, next question, we'll start with Mary Margaret. 
then Bill and uh, finish that second one up with Vicki. Um, Mary Margaret, what's one key thing you're doing now that prepares and equips you for the work ahead? Hmm, let's see. I think that the, you know, like I said, embracing technology really um, has been, you know, a must need for us right now. Um, I also want to make sure that our, that we're adding value um, before we ask for value um, with our clients. And as we have adapted so fast with all this digital solutions, um, it's even more important to be data driven and have a lot of transparency in um, all of our, our digital reporting and anything that we do with our clients so they understand um, where everything's coming from and, um, and see the results. Thanks, Mary Margaret. Um, Bill, same question. Uh, one key thing you're doing now uh, what that uh, prepares you and equips you for the work you see ahead. I think businesses are going to have a little bit of a hard time, definitely including ours, where you got that mojo going and all of a sudden this pandemic stopped or happened. And then what happens to the mojo? So what I'm working on, and I always work on attitude, but what I'm working on now is making sure that everybody's energized, that there is a, a that everybody's going to get their mojo back and that everybody's going to move forward and maybe a different speed and maybe a different world, but we got to move forward. And I want to make sure that my little business, my little publishing company moves forward and actually create new ideas um, as we move forward, because even though there's a pandemic that surrounds us, pandemic that surrounds us, doesn't mean we have to shrivel. It means we can grow. And what I like, what I'm hearing from everybody here is everybody is growing, but that's my main thing to answer your question more directly is to keep the mojo going with inside the walls of Mount Pleasant Magazine and media services. Thanks, Bill. I, I appreciate knowing that. And, and you seem to have a great, greater resolve than, I see in an awful lot of people a, a level of confidence in your attitude that uh, there are some great opportunities uh, hiding in this uh, in this bit of a mess that we're in. Um, Vicki, same question. One key thing you're doing now that prepares and equips you for the work ahead. Well, we look for opportunities to be successful. Um, we have what we call prep sports every spring where we recognize the top athletes. Uh, in the East Cooper area. Uh, last year, we recognized over 30 athletes. Well, we had no spring sports this year. There was only fall and winter. But we didn't want to let those fall and winter athletes go unrecognized or unnoticed because it weren't spring. We also, we, we hold a banquet for them. We couldn't hold a banquet. It was always in April or 1st of May. So we couldn't hold a banquet. So we so uh, Frankie Mansfield's gonna write a story. There's a total of, I think 10 or 12, I can't remember, 10 or 12 athletes from that fall and winter. And he's gonna write an individual story on each one of them. And we dedicated a page on our website to them. And uh, they'll get the recognition that they deserve. Same thing for the grads. It's hard to do anything for grads who aren't having a graduation. So we came up with a web page that the students or their parents can go on and post their graduation picture with a little note. That's free of charge. They just go up, they post it. Again, helping to recognize students in our community that perhaps aren't, I mean, I remember my graduation. It was, it was a wonderful experience in my life. And I can't imagine not being able to have that celebration with your families and your friends. So we're doing our little part in trying to look at whatever obstacles are out there and work with them and turn them into something positive for our, all of our readers and our community. Thanks, Vicki. That makes perfect sense. And, and it really does tear at the heart of things that are so close and, and cherished by so many of us. And, uh, you know, all of you uh, have an opportunity to reflect our lives and that, that reflection has changed so significantly and fundamentally in such a short period of time that, uh, you know, we all find ourselves reeling a little bit, but then also getting our balance, getting our feet back under us and finding ways to serve and to, as Mary Margaret mentioned, to, you know, continue to add value before we ask for value. So Vicki, thank you for that. Mm -hmm. um, next question. 
is um, what one thing would you recommend that others in businesses similar to your own, you're all involved in uh, at least one form of traditional media, but everybody, if you're in media, you're in all of it these days, right? You have to live in all of those new realms. And I say new, they're relatively new. Um, what one thing would you recommend that others in businesses similar to your own do or don't do as we live and work in the current new normal? And Bill, we'll start with you on that question and move to uh, Vicki and then finish with Mary Margaret. Uh, I've, I've, uh, I've always, John, always loved my, my, my client base, uh, um, you know, my marketing partners, but I think it's so important to know how much you appreciate them. And, and so whatever business is, but, but, but media business, uh, whether it's through Facebook, through direct mail, through just reaching out to our customer base. I don't think you can do enough of it, to be honest with you. As long as it comes from the heart, and as long as you really feel what you're saying, then say it. And so that's what we've been doing. All, all my salespeople and my, and my, we've been, we've been, uh, so that's what I would recommend anybody that's in media or any other business. Let people know how much you appreciate them and who they are and what they do. Uh, not only for you, but for other people, you know, so that would be my thing is it is to, uh, and, and I hope afterwards, after this is all over, one of the things that I hope we all do, wh whatever business we're in, is to show that appreciation as much as possible. Yes, so indeed. I, I hope I answered your question. <laughs> <laughs> you did, Bill. Thank you so much. Uh, Vicki, same thing. What one thing would you recommend that others in businesses similar to your own, do or don't do in this new current new current normal? So we're not in this alone. As you said, John, the whole world is experiencing this at the same time. You know, we have we met with our other community newspapers. Um, I've had meetings with the South Carolina Press Association. We've met with other regional and national media people. And it's come out great. Cecilia, our news editor at the Moultrie News herself, moderated a meeting with the South Carolina Press Association. And they had close to 30 journalists in South Carolina. They got on a phone call to talk about how do we cover our areas with a COVID? You know, you're not supposed to go out and get news. Sports is not there to cover anymore. There's no events to cover. What do we do? And that was a very successful that she did. I've worked with um, national, um, been on meetings with national uh, newspaper groups where we talked about um, ideas, things that's worked in different markets. Um, it's, it's just so comforting to talk to people who are going through the same thing you are. And sometimes they have some great solutions for you. The, the grad page that we actually put up came from one of those meetings and we jumped on it, said this is a great idea, we're gonna do that. So I, I think the most important thing is remember, you're not alone. Seek people out in your, your environment that's going through the same things and draw strength from them and learn from them. You're muted. John, you're muted. <laughs> I, I can keep forgetting to push that button, can I? Yeah. Forgive me. Um, Vicki, uh, and thank you for reinforcing once again something that we're hearing is that there's been more peer contact and connection than probably ever in the history of each of the vertical, you know, uh, each of the verticals in business. I think that's true in the nonprofit sector as well. There's more of a dialogue, there's more of a togetherness, and the miles don't, uh, the miles don't get in the way anymore. The distance doesn't, uh, doesn't get in the way. So Vicki, thank you. Uh, Mary Margaret, one thing you'd recommend that others in business do or don't do as uh, we get into this current new normal? Um, our big thing is we are over communicating. Um, you know, we want to make sure everybody knows what's going on. They all are aware of the situation and because things change minute by minute, it seems like right now. Um, so we really want to make sure we're doing that with our um, employees and our clients. And then, you know, just a lot of what um, Vicki and Bill have said is about, you know, placing a high value on those relationships as well. 
Um, and, you know, also I just want to throw in to automate more processes. And that is my dog that just moaned. So sorry about that. <laughs> Working from home. Completely understandable. It's about that time to eat here. <laughs> Treat time. They, they wait until the event starts before they, uh, they speak up. So completely understandable, Mary Margaret, and excusable. Um, and thank you for that. Automating the processes. Absolutely. We have opportunities that we didn't have to look at before and we can find them now. So that's, uh, that makes things very exciting. Um, Rebecca, let's get, uh, let's get you in here for any questions for those attending live or something that occurs to you. Well, we do have a question and you all have done an excellent job of pivoting with your respective businesses for the short term. How do you pivot for the long term and keep that energy level up? Are you doing long term pivot plans, for example, for the next six months since COVID-19 is more of a marathon than a sprint? Open, open question. Who wants to jump in first? I mean, I we, jump in. we are for sure. We're uh, dis distribution of the magazine. Uh, we are finding solutions. We have a magazine, John, up in Greenville. Uh, upstate and and uh, we, we're finding different ways to distribute the magazine than leaving it at a local business for people to pick up and it involves uh, it involves more direct mail and it involves more selected people that we direct mail it to and it involves our client base and and as I said before earlier uh, that we found solutions I mentioned the uh, the waiting room in the doctor's offices when I, when I spoke to the salesperson, the distributing person that was out there, and he was all frustrated, I said, let's keep calm about this, let's figure this out. And as a result of his, his uh, reducing his anxiety and, and anger a little bit over it, that's what we came up with. So we're doing a lot more direct mail. So there's, and that's how we've solved some of the challenge regarding that. Thanks, Bill. Mary Margaret, you had a thought on this. Um, yeah, what we're doing really is we're offering a lot more e-learning opportunities with clients um, focused on different industries and everything right now for the future. Um, and I think that that's something that will continue. Um, obviously, with our news, you see anchors still at home, um, meteorologists, we've slowly brought them back in um, and we're still kind of, you know, bringing back people in back to the office slowly. Um, but probably going to keep our sales um, team at home and they're going to work from home for a while um, and continue to do that. I know that's kind of a job perk right now for them that they hadn't had before. So um, we're doing that. And we've also kind of made our, some of our reporters and photographers do four 10 hour days. So they have three days off now. So mm -hmm. we're you know, looking at things like that, that to help us, um, and that we, you know, in the future, and we think that this will continue, so. Great, thanks, Mary Margaret. Uh, Vicki? So we've been back to work in the offices for two weeks, um, taking security precautions. Um, we have masks available. We have plexiglass shields, most of the building, the wiping surfaces. So, you know, we're back in business as usual doing that. Um, so th the main thing for us has been that we are constantly talking as a sales team. We've never consulted so much, trying to keep those morales up, trying to come up with ideas. Uh, and, but the main thing is listening to our customers. They'll tell us when they're ready. They'll tell us when they wanna move forward. And we're just continuing to touch them and reach them. And uh, it's, I don't think that this is a, a time that you can plan you don't know what you're going to be doing in six months. You don't know what, I don't know what I'm going to be doing tomorrow. It seems like every day's changed. So I think the main thing is that you're going to have to be light on your feet and you've got to change every day as things change with this COVID virus. Yes, indeed. Thanks, Vicki. Um, we do have one other question from somebody who is with us in the live event, and that is, um, have you uh, made any decisions to uh, discount your advertising rates either to help your current clients or to maybe entice some new prospects to come and, and partner with you? Um, if I may go first. Sure. Okay. So it's, it's actually going to take place tomorrow. Uh, we are having what we call an a million dollar grant and advertisers can apply for a grant where we do matching dollars that they can do. 
Uh, that happens tomorrow, and this is going to be a company-wide um, offer from us. So it will include um, the Moultrie News, the Post and Courier, Somerville, Goose Creek, Berkeley, Free Times, Aiken, Georgetown, King Street. And so it will help advertisers in this market, but also if they want to go outside the market. We know a lot of the, um, it's going to be a lot of staycations this year. So if people want to advertise for, to get people in other parts of the state to come here or to visit here, this grant would be a perfect opportunity for them to do that. And early on, we did have some um, rate cuts in April too. Okay, Vicki, thank you. Mary Margaret? Okay, that's my dog again. <laughs> Mary, Mary Margaret, what, Sorry, kind of I'm Mary Margaret what kind of dog do you have? Chocolate Lab, she's ready to eat. It's like four, you know. <laughs> um, so as far as us, we did a thing for the community that was free of charge. We called it Open for Business Channel 4, and we're still accepting people to send in their logos and everything that they're doing, and we're airing that on television. Um, at no charge. We also, uh, we price how the market is right now and now the market's a little soft. So, you know, we do base our prices on that. But the thing about um, viewing right now um, content on digital and TV mm -hmm. is, is um, for us, we've seen really big spikes there with people wanting to get news. Um, so our, our, our levels are all time high, but we are um, priced at where the market is, which is low. Because that's just about as upside down as it can be, isn't it? Yes. Right? So yes. Yeah, so that's probably kind of right. probably for all of us because we're yeah. doing the same thing. Our website is going bonkers. Yeah. Right. I mean, we're seeing crazy numbers, but it's just we're not we're not really doing anything, getting you know much off that because of the way the economy is right. Now. And I'm sure we're all experiencing that together. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Bill, a thought on that? Um, I, we didn't cut rates and we kept the rates the same. We gave terms. We, we allowed people to, to pay us down the road, like some of the mortgage companies are doing. But we actually got some new advertisers in this issue that came out. And, um, and I mean, I mean, it's, you know, it's all about attitude. It's all about attitude. And, and, you know, like you got to, I, I feel, Mary Margaret, it's just a bummer because you know everybody's home watching TV. And, I mean, the ratings have to be through the roof, you know? It's just a, it's just a shame. It's, uh, yeah, I, but, yep, that's what happens. But it is what it is, right? <laughs> yeah, I wish it didn't happen that way, but it is. I mean, you know that when sports comes back, if there's no fans there, I mean, that's an unfor unfortunate, but they will be, you know, watching TV a lot. They will need you them. more than ever, Mary Margaret. Yes. And I yes. am, um, I am front and center. I'd rather be there in the stands personally. So I'd rather yes. have it both ways to be, to put that out there. I'd rather, I want I to agree. see I it on the game more. and I want to see it also on TV. So. <laughs> yep. yes, indeed. Hey, um, let me mention one quick thing and we're going to come back to the panelists for a final thought. I, I mentioned up at the top that uh, there's a free offer. I now have um, a report and an assessment that measures stress for individuals in organizations. It measures stress for leaders specifically and for members of your team. It is absolutely free of charge. I am happy to help anybody who is interested in it. It's a very simple process. We get you online with a link. You answer a series of questions. A report comes out, we have a conversation, and you get some insights into where the stress may be coming from for an individual, a leader, or an entire team of people. And we're doing it completely free of charge now through the end of June to give you an idea. We, we really do believe, and I think we've all seen examples of this, where there are some people that are suffering silently with some stress right now. And we'd love to be able to get into that a little bit. And maybe it starts a dialogue where one wasn't available otherwise. So uh, it's called the Stress Quotient. Um, you can find me uh, at the uh, Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce or at johncarroll.com. And I will uh, be able to get that going for you absolutely free through the end of June. Um, that's enough about that. Uh, final thoughts, panelists. Uh, we're going to uh, ask you the same direction that we started. Vicki, if you'll uh, give us a final thought before we uh, close out. Well, I'd just like to say that, you know, you bring out the mental health is so important. The, the stresses that people are facing at home is mothers trying to teach or 
uh, parents with um, children that are not healthy, trying to take care of them at home, uh, elderly people, not being able to see your loved ones. Uh, there's so many stressors out there that I really and truly hope people will just take time to find whatever that valve is that releases that stress and will listen to themselves and their bodies and take time to take care of themselves. And that's gonna be very important for so many people. And that's, that's my wish is that everyone will do their best to maintain that level of healthiness. Thank you, Vicki. Thank you so much for being with us. Mary Margaret, a final thought? Um, my thought is just optimism is a must, you know, right now. And I really um, believe that, um, that we can get through this and hopefully we will all come back stronger. So that's my hope. <laughs> yes, indeed. Thank you, Mary Margaret. Bill, a final thought? Uh, my final thought is uh, we uh, is whatever we can do as a media, a medium to go out and, and make sure that we build that um, um, that confidence in the consumer. Consumer confidence right now is the, in my opinion, is the most important thing. And one of the ways that we can all do that is by making sure when we do go out, we practice social distancing, we do the things necessary, like Vicki indicated earlier, it said earlier about the, the research of this and it's on everybody's mind. And, and I, I just hope that people will, will think about social distancing and the things that they need to do so that it will be uh, less of, an, of, a, of a chance of, of the virus uh, coming back and rising its ugly head again. Yes, indeed. Bill, thank you so much. So thank you, Vicki Boyd, publisher of the Moultrie News, Mary Margaret Nelms, general manager of WCIV, ABC News 4, and Bill Macchio, publisher of Mount Pleasant Magazine, for your time and participation today. Thanks to all of our chamber members with us live and those catching us on the recording. And a big thank you to Rebecca Imholtz and Tamara Cornwall with the Mount Pleasant Chamber of Commerce, for being the glue to hold us all together, along with not only the chamber members, but our community. We thank you and goodbye. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks.